Planet Earth, home to over six billion people, all of whom have only one question on their minds. What's for dinner? This is the big world of food. I'm your host, Chef John Veronese. Kentucky Proud. I'm here with Roger Bingham, the Deputy Executive Director of the Department of Agriculture for Kentucky, and also known as Kentucky Joe on the television series Survivor. And Roger's also a farmer himself. That's right. Roger, what do you think your most important role is working for the Department of Agriculture? And tell me how your farming experience and also your experience on the television series Survivor has helped you teach agriculture to youth. Well, you know, John, I wear a lot of different hats working for the Department of Agriculture. I'm literally all over the state, from one end of it to another. I go to a lot of schools, I try to educate kids about agriculture, about how important agriculture is. Really, I've been to about any type of group that you can mention or think of in the, at some time or in the past six and a half years, somewhere in the Commonwealth to speak to them about agriculture. You know, agriculture is very, very important to the economy here in the uh, Commonwealth. We've got about 84,000 farms in the Commonwealth. Uh, the average size is 165 acres. And, and I think last year, farm revenues amounted to over $4 billion. Uh, and that's, so that's, that's a whole lot of money coming into the Commonwealth. That's big revenue for the state. Big, big revenue, yes. What do you think your most rewarding experience has been working for the department? Well, you know, I thoroughly enjoy going around talking to uh, youth. Uh, and a lot of times I'll talk to them about farming and I'll relate that to being on Survivor and then I can relate that to staying off drugs, uh, uh, staying away from alcohol, staying away from tobacco products. You know, we got a problem here in the Commonwealth uh, with kids being overweight. And not only kids, but all the way from little kids all the way up to older adults. And when you got in a uh, group of people that are overweight, uh, you know, you're going to have some health problems in the, in the state. So we're trying to teach our, our youth to eat properly. Another thing that we're trying to do uh, with the Department of Ag uh, uh, is trying to promote farm safety. Uh, and here again, Kentucky ranks, I think, in the bottom five states for four-wheeler accidents uh, of all the 50 states. So we've got a problem with that. And, and so we're, we're trying to, and I'm really putting forth an effort every time I go to speak, I always mention that, even if I'm talking to kids or if I'm talking to their, to their parents about how important farm safety, four-wheeler accidents are, and, and uh, for them to always practice good safety procedures no matter what they're doing. Yeah, and going back to uh, before talking about the health of kids, you know, I find that very important on the big world of food. A lot of our concept, you know, this season has been farm to table and understanding where it all comes from. And it is really sad that you see the youth today that their first choice is going to McDonald's or finding the quick ready to serve product that is really not that healthy for them. And when they have this great opportunity to have all this great fresh produce oh, yes. that's grown locally yep. and to educate them to, to take advantage of this stuff. You know, we're really, really, the whole department and Commissioner Farmer spearheaded this a little over six years ago when he took office. He said, I'm gonna really promote the Kentucky Proud label. And of course that's- Kentucky Proud products are all products that have been grown, raised or packaged in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. You're buying something from a local farmer. You're not buying something from somebody out of state or some uh, article or some product from someone halfway around the world. I was reading a few weeks ago on a Farm Bureau website, it said if you go in a large supermarket and take an average of all those items that are on the shelf, from the time that item leaves the farm till it arrives on your tabletop, travels an average of 1,461 miles. So wow. you know, if you can buy something locally, something with Kentucky Proud, you're buying something locally, something that's going to be better for you, fresher for you. And you know, when uh, and there again, uh, six and a half years ago, Kentucky Proud, I think, had roughly about 30 individuals signed up under the Kentucky Proud program. Cash receipts were virtually nil. Uh, we now have over 1,800 individuals signed up under the Kentucky Proud uh, logo. 
And uh, the last two years, I think cash receipts has amounted to over $200 million just on Kentucky Proud products. That's some really great growth there. Oh, it's been and, phenomenal, been phenomenal. And you guys at home, some of you don't really understand that some of this produce that is brought in, like Roger said, from 1,400 miles, like for example, tomatoes, they pick them a little green so they could stand the shipping process. So you have a really inferior product, again, when you, you, you have such great product just at our back doors here. Oh, that's right, that's right. And you know, if you can keep those dollars right here in the Commonwealth and keep them rolling over rather than you know, paying for something out of state or halfway around the world, you know, that helps everybody. Yes, and, and again, I know you're a big advocate um, for prevention of, of drug abuse. Uh, there's other programs like the, the Portland Now uh, Prevention Program. Most Portland youth do not use alcohol, drugs, or tobacco. The Portland Now Prevention Partnership works to get this word out in the community to prevent substance abuse with a peer-to-peer -peer message. Go to weareportlandproud.com for more information. And uh, got to tour the facilities here. It's a phenomenal facilities. And you know, the parents have an obligation. I think your, your educators have an obligation. Uh, public officials have an obligation to try to steer our youth in the right direction. And, and you know, we got a lot of kids who are getting caught up in the alcohol and the marijuana and the drugs. There's so much out there now for them. So I think, you know, if you're a parent or an educator or whatever, if you're set, you know, you need to sit down with that child and tell them, you know, hey, here's what's going on out there on the streets and in, throughout the uh, state, throughout the nation. Here's what, here's what we expect of you. Here's what these drugs can do to you if you're taking them or this alcohol or, or tobacco product. You know, here's what it can do to you. And years down the road, it can make you very sick. It can make you uh, dependent upon it. It can flat out ruin your life. And, and I, th I think we're starting to see the light in that respect and putting more effort towards that. Uh, just sitting down and you know having one-on-one -on -one talks with these with these kids. And I know it's really hard because education comes from top down, and yeah. sometimes the parents are not educated enough. And it's great that you have places here like the neighborhood house yes. that's help educating these kids and help them really understand, you know, the, the health issues. That's right. And also the, the drug abuse issues and um, all these things that they're going to encounter as as they get older. Yeah, yeah, they're very fortunate to have a. Uh, facility like neighborhood house in this in this area. This is my second time here and I just toured the entire facilities. It's absolutely phenomenal what's what's going on here uh, to help the uh, the youth in this in this area. Well how can you uh, tell people out there for people that live in the city to help support their local farmers? Well you know you can go to farmers markets you know there's so many farmers markets now across the uh, the uh, the Commonwealth. If you go in stores a uh, lot of the stores, some of the big chain names, the big, big chain name stores are becoming involved with, uh, with Kentucky Proud because they see it's a win-win situation. It's a win for the, for the people in the state and it's a win for the grocery stores, you know, to have those products to sell. So I encourage you to look for that Kentucky Proud label when you go in uh, and, you know, think, hey, I'm going to buy that Kentucky Proud label uh, item. I'm helping my uh, local neighbors, my local farmers right down the road. and. Uh, I think that's, that works out the best for everybody. Well, are you able to give us any recommendation to tell us how us city slickers could survive <laughs> anything? Well, you know, when I made it on Survivor, I, uh, I went to the uh, local library and read as many books as I could get on survival uh, techniques, to be honest with you. Uh, honestly, I found that my background from growing up on a farm was by far the most helpful. Uh, I did learn a few things in the book, but basically uh, I'd been in the outdoors enough. Uh, I knew what to do. I knew how to build the shelters. I knew how to, to fish. I caught conservatively 80% of the fish caught up by the entire 16 people. Wow. <laughs> uh, there, was a, uh, there was one instance I know, remember on, the, uh, on Survivor 2 where we were building a campsite. Well, all the ladies, especially the ladies, but some of the men too that had been brought up in the city, they were wanting to build the shelter down on what they called a dry creek bed. Now this is a gully about 20 feet wide and 10 feet uh, deep coming into a river. And I told them, I said, y'all, I said, sometime or another, there's water comes down that gully. <laughs> there's but a reason that, it's that big it's and not, that deep. That's right, it's not always dry. And, but we actually took a hand vote on because I was very, very adamant about building up on the higher ground. Well, I lost, uh, lost that vote, uh, got outvoted. So we built our campsite there and then 
Uh, a few days later, it just washed everything away. So were you sitting up at the hill laughing at them? Well, no, we, we were actually out at a challenge about three hours away, and then when we came back to camp, every, everything was gone. And, and, you know, I always tell the, the, uh, the folks when I go out to speak to different groups, I said, you know, I could go down in the mountains of eastern Kentucky and go in any fifth grade class down there, and the kids down there would know that you don't pitch a tent in the middle of a creek bed. <laughs> but yet, some of these folks that I was on Survivor with did not. Somehow did not, they made it there and quite didn't understand the basics. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been really excellent. And now we're going to head over to the mobile unit and make some Kentucky Proud ice cream. Take your taste buds on a tour of Kentucky. It's a lot of fun. Watch Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs with host Tim Laird, Saturday nights at 10.30 on WBKI. Tune in to The Barbara Bryant Show, weekday mornings at 6.30 on WBKI, CW7. Today we're here with Michael Kuna, Chef Instructor of Sullivan University. How are you doing this afternoon, Michael? Good, how are you, Chef? Doing wonderful. So you, you, you've been working with some of the finest restaurants in town, and now you've become a Chef Instructor. What, what made you want to, to be on the other side of things? Well, I've always wanted to be an instructor, and that's part of the reason why I originally moved to Louisville, but that was 20 years ago. And I was not near ready to teach others 20 years ago, but I felt that it was, you know, the time was right, and um, trying to, you know, juggle family time and the hustle and bustle of a restaurant was difficult, so this makes it much easier. And I still get to cook with food, I get to work with young people, so it kind of keeps me young, and uh, I still enjoy doing what I do because it is food related. Well, Michael, what do you believe to be the value of a degree here at Sullivan University? Well, when students come to the university, we get students from all over the, all over the country and I, I, actually all over the world. So we see the students that come to us, um, and it's basically all about technique. It's about learning the proper way to cook foods from as simple as knife cuts to all the way through techniques like braising and grilling. And, uh, you know, when they move on to international cuisine, they learn the cuisines of the world. So they get to take that information with them. But the most important thing is they're learning properly from from the university, from a, a, a program that we work real hard and the chef instructors work daily with the students to teach them properly. Well, off the top of the head, can you tell me about any success stories from Sullivan, any great chefs or people have gone off and done their, their own thing? Oh yeah, there's dozens actually. We, you know, I've been in this industry in, in town for 20 years and um, I've seen a lot of chefs come through with me and my restaurants and we've we've promoted a lot to sous chefs and executive chefs and you can definitely tell the talent that comes from the program and, and they take that talent with them and then they teach others. Yeah, I know personally in my restaurant the majority of my culinary staff is a graduate from Sullivan University. Oh yeah, yeah, ours too, ours too. We, we have the uh, program that uh, does interns and most times when we hire folks for the restaurant it's through the intern program so you kind of get to pick the best of the best. Well that's great too because it helps the students get placement as they finish graduate and they know where they want to go and how to, to sure. go about that. Well, and they get to see the hustle and bustle of a, a real live kitchen. I mean, you know how that is where it's a different environment than school, but it's something they need to see and uh, they enjoy it. They really enjoy it. Really important to be out there in the, in the real world. No, you got to see what it it's goes. like. Yeah, you got to get your, you know, roll your sleeves up and get in there, you know, just learn. Well, thank you, Michael. My pleasure, sir. There we have it, Michael Kuna, chef instructor at Sullivan University. Interested in a career in hospitality? Give us a call at 502-456-6505 or check us out at Sullivan.edu. With 30 years experience in the industry, I've seen the evolution of the point of sale system from the early days of the handwritten checks to now the amazing Aloha system. Here at Berenice, we chose Aloha first of all for its exceptional service, but also its ease of use. We can split checks, even individual items. I can check sales reports, product mix reports, I can literally run the entire restaurant from this one computer. This is why Aloha is our system of choice. How to Buy brought to you by Creation Gardens. Reminding you that dining out makes you happy, so let's start smiling again. When buying fresh local produce, there are certain things to find the tastiest, freshest ingredients. Today we're here with Chef Cray of Creation Gardens 
and he's going to tell us a little bit how to look for the freshest produce for our favorite recipe. How are you doing this afternoon, Cray? Great. Thanks for having me, John. So tell us what we have here. Well, we've got a variety of fall and winter produce here. Um, I can sort of walk through these. The, the first is our, our hard squashes. Uh, these are real common in the fall. You're going to look for a nice, firm exterior, uh, no blemishes on the outside. And you can also look to the stem to make sure that's firm and intact. Um, that goes for all your fall squashes. This is a red curry. Um, and then with the hardy greens, uh, we're really looking for a, a shiny texture to the leaves. Um, you can also look to the to the cut base of the leaves. You're going to look for any signs of discoloration that can tell you how fresh those are. Um, here we have some some local bib lettuce. This is this is grown locally throughout the winter. Uh, with this, again, you're looking for a nice shiny leaf uh, for nice crispy stems and. And again, if you look at the base, you're looking for a nice clean cut and no rust or, or signs of discoloration there. Well, excellent. Well, all this stuff looks beautiful. Thanks, Craig, for showing us how to shop. Great. Thanks for having me. Eclectic contemporary Mediterranean cuisine, extensive wine list, four seasons patio, exciting atmosphere, Fresh Kentucky Proud local ingredients. Vegetarian friendly. Live jazz seven nights a week. For more information, call 502 899 9904. Veronese, 2106 Historic Frankfurt Avenue. Kentucky Proud. When we left John and Roger, they were at the neighborhood house talking about the benefits of Kentucky Proud products and Survivor. Today I'm here with Jason Hodge from the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. We're here at the neighborhood house where Jason has brought the education unit to give us some real hands-on experience. Jason, why don't you tell our audience what we're going to be doing today? Well today, John, what we're going to do is we're going to let the kids experience making homemade ice cream. And we're going to explain to them where the ingredients come from that go into making the ice cream. Excellent. Well, let's get started. All right. Okay, folks, uh, first of all, my name is Jason Hodge. I'm with the Kentucky Department of Agriculture, and you are in the Mobile Science Activity Center. What we are going to do today is we are going to be making ice cream. Hey. Who can tell me what is the main ingredient in ice cream? Milk, all right? Where does milk come from? Cows. Cows. What kind of cows? California ones, right? Happy cows, right? <laughs> Happy cows. Happy cows. Happy cows come from California, correct? All right, milk comes from dairy cows, okay? And that's one of the things uh, we have here in the state of Kentucky. We have cattle, okay? We have beef cattle and dairy cattle. Remember kids, when making your own ice cream, be sure not to spill the milk. Jason is now going through the very scientific process on how to make the ever so popular homemade vanilla ice cream. I got to play too. Yeah. Okay. It's a little different. All, all I can do is hold the bag. <laughs> Roger got the, yeah, the, the there's, bag there's holding no down. age requirements on this. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have been bragging, I'll probably drop it. A little different from the ice cream I make at the restaurant, but this still looks really good here, guys. You see the clear in that corner? And what you can do, oh, all right, oh, yeah. is just kind of slosh it up a little bit more, okay? You just want to make sure you I never really poured milk in the okay. resealable bag, but. All right. Okay. Yes, pour the whole cup in. When you get to the milk stage, now you may, okay, go ahead, you're okay. All right, now what you need to do, folks, is everybody got a container? You need one bucket, one lid, and one washcloth per person. You should have one extra one that will not be used at each station. John, Roger, Jason, and the rest of the crew embark on their journey of making this tasty treat. Anytime you do the spoons, you want to level to that okay. top. Fill it full. That's going to help freeze your ice cream. Fill that spoon full. There you go. Dump it. Now let him do his. Okay? Y'all got it over here? No, not yet. Fill it I think, up. I think he's going to put ice in there. Okay. And now what we're going to do, folks, now that you got your salt in. And that'll help freeze it. Okay. Now that you got your salt in, we need something to freeze this ice cream. What do we need to freeze this ice cream? Ice. We need ice, don't we? Anybody bring any ice? No. Guess what I did. <laughs> okay. All right. So the ice is at the front of the trailer. I've got some nice folks at the front that's going to help me dip the ice for you. All right. When making homemade ice cream in a bag, you'll need these ingredients: milk, salt, vanilla, sugar, ice, and of course 
Two plastic bags. Mix the milk, vanilla, and sugar in the plastic bag. Place the plastic bag in a large bucket with ice and salt, put a lid on, and shake. In just seven minutes, you'll have delicious homemade vanilla ice cream. Chef John Veronese makes his own different flavors of ice cream without the bag at his restaurant every evening. Some of his personal favorites are peanut butter chocolate chunk and oatmeal cookie dough. He also makes a very popular pepper ice cream. Yes, that's right, pepper. Through education, the Kentucky Department of Agriculture's Mobile Education Unit teaches thousands of children every year throughout the state of Kentucky. Today's lesson teaches us the benefits of Kentucky Proud Dairy products. In our daily diets, we require three portions of dairy a day to keep strong bones and a healthy smile. Of these three servings, we want to take them from the milk, cheese, or yogurt group. Today, we're actually making ice cream for a special milk treat. Got it? Got it. John? Yes, sir. You with me? I think so. All right, good deal. Need a lot a of map? people on the trailer here. Need a map? Uh, some people are drawing me a map. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know how to follow maps, Roger? <laughs> yeah, right. a little bit. <laughs> if you will, just carry your bucket. After getting their final ingredients for making the ice cream, Jason goes through the official safety procedure for shaking. If we take it, four fingers on under the lip, thumbs over the top, and get you a good grip on it, okay? Four fingers under the lip, thumbs over the top, and you just get a good grip, all right? And then all you have to do is just simply take it up and down, okay? Oh! Okay? Now, let me ask you this. Sounds like a bunch of maracas for Cinco de Mayo. Indeed it is, John, for these maracas don't just make noise, but they also make a delicious frozen treat. I'm gonna need it to pull oh, off man. after this. I thought you was a survivor. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't win. <laughs> okay, guys, let's turn around. Let's set them down. Okay, easy. Set them down, easy. The part we've been waiting for. It's the part we've all been oh, waiting for, spoons. right? Okay. Grab you one there. All right. Okay, so John. Be my guest, sir. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Grab you a spoon out of there. Thank you. You are more than welcome, guys. Y'all grab you a spoon out of there. I believe I had two hot shots. <laughs> All right. Oh, so improperly measuring, huh? Put a little cocoa powder in here, and you got chocolate. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, okay. I was cheating. You want to try mine? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we're all on Survivor together. Right? Yeah, you're the first guy. He's the chef. Yours, yours is better. <laughs> Well, Jason, thank you for bringing the education unit by here today and uh, gave us an opportunity to teach these kids how to make some ice cream. I definitely learned to make ice cream in a, in a different way, and it's uh, definitely uh, really delicious. What do you guys think? How good is it? Delicious. Wow, I had such a great experience John? today with Rob. Afraid I got some bad news for you. I really enjoyed being on your show, but I'm afraid you have been, been eliminated. After all, I'm the survivor. I'm the real farmer even on your show. Well, Roger, I got a surprise for you, too. I have the idol of immunity here. That's why I'm Kentucky proud. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to open my own restaurant that serves locally grown food prepared with a creative flair. And thanks to Commonwealth Bank and Trust, my restaurant is now a reality. Commonwealth Bank provided me with all the banking options I needed. They make decisions locally, provide superior service, and best of all, they treat me like family. So whatever your banking needs may be, check out Commonwealth Bank, and rest assured, you'll be in the hands of people who treat you like family. Cool Tools is brought to you by The Dine Company. Welcome to another cool tool segment here sponsored by the Dine Company. We're here with owner Richard Manius to show us some cool cleaning supplies for your kitchen. What do we have here, 
Well, what we have is our normal green scrubber pad with a sponge. We see these every day. This is more for our heavy duty cleaning. Yeah, but it scratches your fine porcelain in the china, so we don't want to use this one. What do we have here? This is a turbo pad. It's ergonomic for your hand. It's organic material that resists scratching. All right, and it's great for cleaning uh, stainless steel and cooktops here. And we got the sponge here to wipe it all up. And here we have uh, microfiber. Microfiber. And they're great for polishing glasses. And it's lint free, so you have nice clean glass and no spots. Great for uh, when you're entertaining. And for the heavy duty cleaning, what do you have over here, Richard? What we have is a grill cleaning system. It's a grill screen with a, with a holder. You put the grill screen on there and you scrub your grill, your flat grill, back to new. Well, those are some cool cleaning supplies from the Dine Company. For all of your culinary needs, come to the Dine Company at 3110 Preston Highway or check us out at DineCompany.com. We know what it's like to be part of a great team, and the Kentucky Department of Agriculture has put one together with Kentucky's growers and food producers. Look for the Kentucky Proud symbol at your grocery store. The products are grown and made right here in Kentucky, so it just makes sense they're fresher and taste better. So be a part of our team by Kentucky Proud. Nothing else is close. Doing things differently leads to something exceptional in an absolute world. Welcome to another exceptional experience brought to you by Absolute. Let's see what exceptional cocktail my award-winning bartender Rory is going to shake up for us today. So the cocktail we're doing today is the very sophisticated. What we're going to do is we're going to start out with a little mum champagne. Go ahead and pour that into our glass. Let that settle while we're mixing everything else. There we are. At least some of those bubbles there. We're gonna move on to the blueberries. We're gonna grab about six of those, put in our shaker. About 10 to 12 pomegranate seeds. We're gonna move on to a half an ounce of simple syrup and about a half an ounce of lime juice. Gonna muddle that up. Going to release all the flavors, get that blueberry and pomegranate mixed in there real nice. Going to grab our berry acai. This is the absolute flavor just released. We're going to finish this off with a little champagne. It's going to give us that lava lamp effect with these pomegranate seeds and the blueberry. Easy on the pour. Grab a couple of the blueberries and a little bit of the pomegranate seeds. Put that into our flute. Now that is an exceptional cocktail. Recipe of the Week brought to you by Kentucky Proud. I had the privilege today to meet and work with some really special children and teens alongside with special guests from the Kentucky Department of Agriculture and their education unit. Today, I'm gonna to make some fresh Kentucky salsa using local, healthy, Kentucky proud ingredients. And I thought this would be a great recipe because it's simple, kids could work and make it with their parents. And I've used some fresh roasted corn, some fresh diced tomatoes, and let's toss a little bit of cilantro and lime juice. And my secret ingredient to this is a little bit of fresh mango. And I thought this recipe would be perfect for the kids, using fresh, local, Kentucky proud ingredients from your farmer's market right next to you. And for this recipe and many more like them, visit BigWorldOfFood.com. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to tune in to the Big World of Food, Sundays, CW Louisville at 530. Until then, I'm your host, Chef John Veronese. And in the meantime, visit me at my restaurant, Veronese, 2106 Frankfurt Avenue.